Hey guys, it's Bella. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day today. Today, I am actually in the USA on holiday while you guys are watching this. I'm pre-filming a couple of videos at the moment while I'm overseas, but I'm so excited. I think I might cry when I got on the plane because I haven't been able to travel, obviously, in like three years. This is my first international trip and... I'm so excited and that means the vlogs are coming back because I'm going to be vlogging the entire month-long trip. So get excited. I'm so excited. Are you going to miss me, Mia? Are you going to miss me, darling? Are you going to miss me? She says, I don't care. Just stop touching me and let me sleep. Oh, darling. Oh, I can smell your little popcorn feet from here, darling. So today we're going to be talking about the case of the Trump family, and this is definitely a bizarre one. I've actually been really excited to talk to you about this because I just want to know your thoughts, what you think happened, because it's so interesting, it's so bizarre. Basically, just one day the Trump family, which is a family of five, just up and left the house with nothing. They didn't bring any identification they didn't bring their phones they didn't bring their bank cards they didn't tell anyone they just up left and went on like a 1500 kilometer or 800 mile road trip until eventually each member of the family was found one by one separately and the details surrounding the trip and how each member of the family it was found is really odd and police sergeant mark knight actually was assigned to the case and he said that it is the most bizarre case he has seen in 30 years before we do get into the case i just quickly want to thank today's sponsor casetify for making this video possible casetify is just the best you guys know i love them i don't use anything else on my phone and for good reason I I am such a klutz. I drop my phone all the time. I used to smash all of my phones, which was so frustrating. But ever since I switched to using Casetify cases, I've not smashed a single phone. I don't even have Apple Care on this one because I'm just so confident because Casetify cases are approved for drops of up to 9.8 feet and they're also 5G and wireless charging compatible. Their impact and ultra impact cases are also made of 65% recycled materials and the packaging to all of their products are 100% recycled recyclable they are made of recycled paper and non-toxic soy ink they have so many different designs so many different prints that really there is something for anybody and they're customizable as well so i mean what more could you want i pretty much have a case for every mood that i'm in but i'm currently just loving the clear case if you guys are interested in checking out any of the case defy products you can go to case defy dot com slash Bella to get 15% off your order so make sure you guys check that out I'll leave all of the information in the description down below and speaking of cases let's go ahead and get into today's mystery Monday case so the Trump family consisted of 51 year old Mark Trump and 52 year old Jacoba Trump and together they ran a red current farm and earth moving business from their property in Sylvan which is a suburb on the outskirts of Melbourne and their children 29 year old Rihanna 25 year old Mitchell and 22 year old Ella lived at home and worked on the family farm as well and by all accounts they were just your regular hard-working Aussie family and then on the 29th of August in 2016 the entire family just up and left without telling anyone they didn't bring their bank cards their identification their phones they didn't warn anyone they just up and left left and went on a cash only tech free road trip except it seemed like it was more than just a road trip because it seemed like they were fleeing from somebody or something and their friends and family very quickly became concerned because nobody could get in contact with them so the next day on august the 30th they contacted the police and the police went to their home to check it out see what was going on and when they got there all of their cars were there with the car doors open and the keys still in the ignition 
all except for 22 year old Ella's Peugeot SUV which is obviously the car they took on the road trip. The front door to the house was unlocked and the house was in disarray as if somebody had been looking inside for something. There were several piles of financial and business records in the house which were very ordered so it was clear that they had been looking for something in particular. Inside the house they also found all of the family's passports, identifications, bank cards and mobile phones all except for 25 year old Mitchell's mobile phone which he had taken on the road trip and as it turns out about 30 kilometers or 19 miles into the road trip their father Mark actually forced Mitchell to throw his mobile phone out of the window of the moving car because he believed the phones were being used to track them and that somebody was trying to steal all of their money. From this police gathered that they wanted to be untraceable and that's why they took this tech-free, cash-only road trip so that nobody could trace them, nobody could find them. They obviously felt like they were on the run, but the fact that Mitchell had actually brought his phone or tried to bring his phone on the road trip indicated that maybe he wasn't buying into whatever the rest of the family thought was going on. But I don't know about that because I'm 25, I'm almost 25, I'm 25 next month, which don't even talk to me about it, but... I'm 25 next month and I can tell you right now, if my parents asked me to throw my phone out of a moving vehicle, it would be an immediate no. Unless I like believed whatever was going on. I don't know. It really makes you question the situation, what his parents were saying to him, all of that sort of thing. Also after sifting through their financial and business documents that they had left in neat piles around the house, police found they didn't have any outstanding debts, there was no signs of anybody in the house being on any form of drug and there were no signs of anyone in the family being affiliated with any churches or any cults or anything like that so they just couldn't figure out what triggered this family to just randomly up and leave and this trip of theirs actually prompted a massive manhunt for all of the family members and it blew up in the media and captivated the attention of Australia. Okay so let's talk about the trip itself shall we? As we already know they left on Monday the 29th of August in 2016 in 22 year old Ella's Peugeot SUV and they drove for the entire first day and through the first night until they reached Bathurst in New South Wales which is about 800 kilometers or 500 miles from their home in Sylvan. At around 7 a.m. on Tuesday the 30th of August after reaching Bathurst 25 year old Mitchell actually left the rest of the family and went off on his own. Shortly after he left the rest of the family without Mitchell obviously without Mitchell because I just said he left. I always over explain everything like if I just said the rest of the family then went on well, I think you guys would know that I meant without Mitchell because I just said that Mitchell left, but for some reason I'm like, oh, I better just clarify real quick. Even though by clarifying and over explaining things, I probably make things more complicated. I don't know. I know I need to stop doing it, but I just can't help it. So just bear with me <laughs> while I over explain everything. Anyway, shortly after Mitchell leaves, the rest of the family drive from Bathurst to the Janolin Caves, which is about an 80 kilometer or 50 mile drive. And when they arrived at the Janolin Caves, 22-year-old Ella and 29-year-old Rihanna also left the family and they were clearly pretty desperate to get away from whatever was going on with their parents because they actually stole a car to get away. I mean, they didn't have any money, they didn't have their identification, passports, bank cards, or anything like that. So I guess they probably just thought that was the only way to be able to leave. But they drove from the Janolan Caves to Goldburn, which is about 150 kilometer or 95 mile drive. And when they arrived, in Goldburn, they actually reported their parents, Mark and Jacoba, missing. And after reporting them missing is really when this case kind of blew up in the media and Australia was captivated. They were so curious as to why this family had randomly up and left and then so strangely separated from each other when up until this point, it could have just been a tech-free, cash-only road trip within their own country. Like it really wasn't 
wasn't that serious until the girls left and reported their parents missing and none of the kids had arrived home yet to explain what was going on. So nobody could make sense of it. Friends and family had no idea what was going on. So the Australian public was just really curious. So interestingly enough, after reporting their parents missing, Ella and Rihanna also split up at a petrol station in Goulburn because Ella wanted to go home and feed her horses and make sure that they were okay. And nobody knows why Rihanna decided not to go with her or what her next moves were gonna be, but she ended up climbing into the back of a Ford F-250 Ute and the driver, a guy named Keith Whitaker, actually didn't notice for about an hour. He drove about an hour away, at which point he heard a kick in the back of his Ute and he pulled over. He's like, let me check out what that was because that was weird. And he goes back there and he finds 29 year old Rihanna in his Ute tray and she is completely catatonic. She doesn't know who she is, what her name is or where she is. And obviously he immediately contacts the police who take her to the Goldburn Hospital where she is admitted for treatment at the psychiatric ward. And she actually remained there for months and months to come. What an insane situation for Keith, right? Like imagine just randomly finding a girl in your U tray and she is catatonic. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know where she is. And imagine having to call the police and be like, there's a girl in my U-tray. I don't know how she got there, but she doesn't remember anything about herself, not even her name. I feel like that would be a really scary call to make to the police. It wasn't me. I don't know how she got there and she doesn't know anything about herself. That's just insane. So as I said, Ella headed home and she made it back to the family's farm in Sylvan by Tuesday night and police were at the house when she arrived and immediately they like ambushed her with a ton of questions about what was going on. And then the next morning on Wednesday, the 31st of August, 25 year old Mitchell also arrived home. Um, he obviously left the family before Ella, but he took longer to get back because he had taken a bunch of different trains trying to get home because I mean I don't even know how they did it they didn't have any money bank cards identification I mean what a struggle it took him like two days to get home but he gets back and then Mitchell and Ella end up doing this really bizarre interview talking about what happened but they hardly even talk about what happened. Like they were trying to answer questions and ease the public's minds, I guess, but they did literally the opposite of easing their minds because they were saying, oh, we don't really know what happened. It was really weird. We can't really explain it. They said that they were baffled by their parents' behavior and they don't really know what happened. And they also made an emotional plea for their parents to return home. They basically said that they were just as perplexed by what had happened as the rest of Australia, but a lot of people seemed like they were trying to hide something, like there was something that they weren't saying. So by now, Mitchell, Ella, and Rihanna have all been found, but their parents are still missing. So a manhunt, a huge manhunt in Victoria and New South Wales gets underway to try and locate their parents, Mark and Jacoba. No one knew where they were, no one knew where they were headed, so it was like a huge manhunt. So what happened after Rihanna and Ella left is Mark and Jacoba kind of backtracked. They drove another the 600 kilometers or 370 miles south to a place called Wangaratta in Victoria and then somehow they also became separated. After separating, Jacoba turned around again. So after they had just driven 600 kilometers back towards their house, when they became separated, Jacoba turned around and started heading away from their house again. Mark had kept the car, so Jacoba used public transport to travel to the town of Yaz in New South Wales, which is another 350 kilometers or 220 miles from Wangaratta. And she arrived in Yaz on Thursday, the 1st of September. She tried to book a motel in the city and I guess she must've been acting weird or something because a member of the public helped escort her to the hospital there. And at the hospital, the staff actually recognized her and called the police and said, hey, we've got Jacoba 
Trump, you know, you guys are looking for her. So the police obviously came and they actually took her to the psychiatric ward of the Goldburn Hospital, which is where Rihanna is as well. And they both received treatment there and stayed there for months and months to come. Meanwhile, Mark actually stayed in Wangaratta and he allegedly dangerously tailgated a young couple at around 10 p.m. on Wednesday, the 31st of August. The car tailgating this young couple was the same color and make as the car car that Mark had been driving, you know, the Peugeot SUV. And they said that they could barely see Mark's headlights because he was tailgating them that closely. At one point they were like, this is ridiculous. So they decided to pull over and then the car tailgating them also pulled over. At which point Mark got out of the car, started running towards them and then stopped in the middle of the road turned around and ran into the nearby Marawa Park and disappeared. So this couple called the police, the police came out, they searched the park, but they could not find any signs of Ma. The car he'd been driving was also found unlocked with the keys still in the ignition. There had also been a report the next day that somebody had broken into a room at the Miller's Cottage Motel. And so they believed that that was actually Mark and that he had broken into that room to have somewhere to stay for the night. And then finally on Saturday the 3rd of September, so about six days after the family just up and left their home after this whole ordeal started, Mark was found wandering along the road near the Wangaratta airport at 5.50 a.m. and he was very clearly agitated and pissed off when he was found. The police brought him into the station and questioned him. They gave him a mental health assessment and he was there for for five hours before he was released to his brother, who was actually a police officer at the time as well. And when he left with his brother, he was still really pissed off, really agitated. And there was a ton of reporters there because obviously this case was massive in the media. It had really blown up. And so it was a huge deal when he was captured. And there's actually photos of him like giving the finger to all of these reporters. And some people speculated that he may have given them the finger and he may have been really agitated because he believed that all of this attention would have gotten him found by whoever he was running from. But he did later apologize to the reporters for giving them the finger and he thanked the community for their concern. The police were never able to identify any threats against the family and to this day, the reason for their bizarre road trip is still unknown. So with that, let's get into some theories. The first theory that has been widely discussed is that the water on their property may have been tainted with drugs, poisons, heavy metals, or cool seam gases, but there really isn't any validity to this. Police sergeant on the case, Mark Knight, said that Ella had made him a cup of tea and he didn't feel anything from it, like he wasn't affected by it at all, and she had obviously used water from the property to make it. The family was also on the same water supply as most of Melbourne. It came from a dam which serviced up to 80% of the population. So I don't really think there's any validity to this one, but it has been widely discussed. There is another similar theory that the family may have been poisoned by byproducts that they used on their farm. Some people said they couldn't help but wonder what they had been spraying their crops with and if the paranoia could be some form of poison that was caused by the chemicals. Some people said that apparently organic pesticides imported from China and some organic farmers were ceased for years because DDT and organopesticides were found on their crops and that these sort of chemicals can lead to these sort of delusions. But again, there isn't really any validity to this. I don't believe anything weird was found on their crops. There's also this popular theory that I find really interesting actually which is that moldy bread or ergot could have caused some form of psychosis and ergot basically is this fungus which causes hallucinogenic drugs to grow in bread and people who ingest it can appear bewitched. Didn't know that. So don't go eating your moldy bread if you have any at home. I will say though, ergot is said to thrive in really cold environments and I mean they did kind of live on the outskirts of Melbourne so it may 
have been really cold. You know, August is kind of nearing the end of winter, getting into spring here in Australia. So I don't know, maybe if they had it for a really long time, like during the winter, <laughs> and then in August, they're like, yeah, let's eat this now. Maybe. It, it could also get really cold at night if it's on like the outskirts of Melbourne. So I don't know. Some people speculated that this had to do with the mob and the mob was actually after them as the family seemed to have believed. And that is why they up and fled. Allegedly, the family was willing to flee the country if they had to, but they decided not to because they were scared that their passports could be tracked, which is why they left their passports back at the house. I mean, <sighs> My thing with this theory is that you'd think if the mob was after you, which is like a pretty big deal, like if the mob was after me. So you'd think if the mob was after them, they would not under any circumstances let their children leave them because they would be way more concerned for their children's lives than to just let them leave and go off on their own. There was also some speculation that they were in debt and that's why they fled and maybe because it was just debt, not with the mob, that that's why they weren't so concerned when their children kind of separated from them. But like I said, all of their financial and business records were found in their home. The police did go through through them. The family had no outstanding debts. There were no signs that anybody was on drugs. So I guess that doesn't really make sense. Now, one of the most popular theories is that the entire family was suffering from folia do. And folia do roughly translates to madness of two. It's also known as shared psychosis or shared delusional disorder. And it's a rare mental disorder that affects two or more individuals usually the members of a close family. The disorder was coined in 1877 when a French couple started acting super paranoid and believed that somebody was coming into their house at night wearing their shoes and tracking dirt and dust all throughout their house and it was unclear who kind of started with these delusional thoughts but it was clear that they were both enforcing each other's paranoia. It was later revealed that Mark and Jacoba had been showing signs of mental stress and that one of them believed that somebody was going to rob and kill them. Ella later said in an interview, I still feel confused. I think our state of minds weren't in the best place and there's no one reason for it. It's bizarre. Now for me, I think this theory is really interesting because I think there are a lot of things that do support it, but there are also a lot of things that don't support it. Like for example, to this day, none of them can explain what happened or why, which could be attributed to the fact that they were all kind of in the shared delusion and when they snapped out of it, they were like, what was that? What was going on? Mark also was the one who was gone the longest. He seemed to be in the state of delusion for up to six days while he was still in Wangaratta by himself. And I mean, I don't really know how folia do works. I don't know if he would still be suffering for, from something like that by himself after six days without anyone to bounce off but if it was him that started it and kind of passed it on to the rest of the family members that explains why when they got separated from him they kind of were able to snap out of it and go home. Jacoba and Rihanna also had to go and receive treatment in the psychiatric ward of the Goldburn Hotel which you know could be a result of these delusions that Mark had passed on to them. Usually in Folia Do the delusions start with one person Person, one individual and they kind of pass these delusions and this paranoia on to other healthy individuals but nobody in the family has any history of mental illness or any history of any health issues. It's also really interesting that they kind of split up one by one and went home and what I find interesting about this is they're all adults right they're all over the age of 22. Mitchell and Ella were the ones who seemed to be least affected by what was happening because they obviously left they went home they seemed to be pretty unaffected by it you know they seemed to be fine by the time they got home and Mitchell even tried to bring his phone on the trip with him but Ella was 22 and Mitchell was 25 they're old enough that if they think something is going on with their parents 
why wouldn't they try to get them help? Why would they all kind of just abandon each other one by one? But that's everything for this case. It's definitely a really interesting and unique case and a bizarre case because they're all obviously back and living their lives as normal, but to this day, no one from the family can explain what happened or why. They just randomly one day up, fled like someone was chasing them, went on a 1500 kilometer or 800 mile road trip without telling anyone and they separated from each other one by one and whatever went on to make them flee ended up with Mark having some weird like tailgating sort of issue like freaking this young couple out and ended with Jacoba and Rihanna in the psychiatric hospital receiving treatment for months afterwards. I mean Rihanna was completely catatonic when she was found. She didn't even remember her name. She didn't know who she was. And I can only imagine what went down to cause that. So I think this case is always going to be a mystery but I would really love to hear your thoughts, what theory you believe, if there are any theories I didn't mention that you might think are possible or plausible for this case, I just cannot wait to hear what you guys think because this case like keeps me up at night, honestly, like thinking what happened? What caused this to happen? What was going on? It's so intriguing to me. So I can't wait to hear your thoughts. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.